Next, Tad Johnson sits down with Vice President Walter Mondale, who worked on major state and federal legislation in the 60s and 70s that made a positive impact for Native nations. He was also one of the few who spoke out against injustice, inequality, and how the United States viewed Native America. Sitting in his office at the Minneapolis law firm of Dorsey and Whitney, Vice President Walter Mondale reflects on the lessons his father taught him as a boy growing up and how he applied those lessons to his years of public service. What I did learn was from my dad, who was a devout, progressive Christian minister, about um, how we owe every person respect every person is a child of God, and that whenever we discriminate against people, it's a sin. And I kind of went into politics with that idea and still have it. My recollection is I made, I, I tried to make friends with uh, uh, Indian leaders, with uh, young Indians coming up. I tried to uh, be a, um, an office that they could come to and talk about their problems. I didn't see them as adversaries. I saw them as people I could work with. I was, although I didn't know much about it, I was convinced that, that, the, that, the, that the Indians had been unfairly treated and that uh, we, there's a lot of justice work that needed to be done. And the more I got into it, the more I became persuaded that big reforms were needed. As Attorney General for Minnesota and later as a United States Senator, he was able to reform Indian policy. Along the way, he made friends with many tribal leaders, most notably the Red Lake Nation chairman, the late Roger Jourdain. Roger was my buddy. I mean, we, uh, he would get me up there for uh, Indian dances, he gave me a headdress, but we would talk serious policy and he'd come out to Washington um, and I would see him there or I would see him in Minneapolis or I'd see him up in Red Lake. Whenever he came to Washington, he always had a place in the White House with me. And I remember he brought uh, some high school kids from Red Lake to, and they wanted to dance somewhere. So we set up a platform out of the White House lawn there and the president came out with me and we watched them dance and they, we did our best to help. And I made many friends uh, during those years. The 1960s and 70s were a time of change on many fronts, including Indian country. This was a time which I think was, it, it looks very good in American history, when there, there was a bunch of young, progressive, Senators, you may name, named a couple of them, Bobby and Teddy, but I think there were a lot of people of like mind, like myself there, that wanted to correct things in America that needed adjustment. And one was this idea of what I call paternalism, where Indians were, could only function if they were under guardianship. If they would get money, it ought to be under trusteeship. If um, the, if there was education, somehow there had to be a bureau there or somebody else overseeing the education. The idea that Indians could be just as capable of handling their affairs, just as interested in their children and their future as the rest of us, had not, it was not dawning as quickly as it should. I can remember don't want to use names here. <clears throat> when we started making these changes, an old, older senator, nice man, but he, we were trying to do some of this self-determination so the Indians could control their own lives and feel good about it. Uh, and he said, you know, are you sure you're going down the right path? Do you, you think they're ready? Uh, to do this for themselves, don't you think we should wait until they're better prepared? And I said, you know, I think, I think we've, 
held on way too long. I think that they, they're just as capable of figuring out their lives as we non-Indians are. And the system we've had has not worked. It started out with trying to basically eliminate the Indian, and then we had 100 years of making a white man out of the Indian. None of it has worked. It's time to just let Indians guide their own lives, help educate their children to feel good about themselves. As a senator, Walter Mondale sat on the Senate Subcommittee on Indian Education and helped to pass the landmark Indian Education Act of 1972. We worked very hard on that committee, and we traveled a lot around the country. We had a lot of hearings. We introduced legislation on the Indian Education Act, which passed, and the theory of the new act was parental control local control, uh, teaching materials that fit children and their histories, that uh, where, where children, when they read it, can see things about themselves that uh, strengthen their sense of self-worth. Every child needs that. Other key pieces of legislation followed during the Carter administration. One that had a great impact was the Tribally Controlled Community College Assistance Act of 1978. That's one of the most exciting things. Um, if you go to Fond du Lac, you have a community college there. It's one of the best in the country. In all, and I think we have a couple other locations in Minnesota. Uh, there's 70 Indian community colleges now in the country. Most of them are big successes. I think that we started pushing them when I was in the Senate, and I think Carter signed a bill establishing an, an, a nationwide Indian community college program with some grants and help. I think it's been very successful. There was a period of eight or 10 years there when the American public were electing people. There was Lyndon Johnson with all of his problems, but Lyndon was good on this stuff, and um, Hubert Humphrey, of course, and and a progressive court with Earl Warren, and, and it was a time for real change. You know, that whole idea of opportunity and dignity and mercy, that, that was the keystone of that era that I talked about. And wherever you went, people were trying to do something to improve lives. A lot of good was done.